what we're going to do is consider the reals. And here's our theorem. R is uncountable. Which means that, what does this mean? Proof is we need to show there is no bijection from z plus to r. That is my goal. The goal is to simply say, okay, there is no such thing as a bijection from z plus to r. Uh, we've had problems with the word no before, right? Show that the square root of 2 is not rational. Could we deal with the concept of being not rational? It's like, no, that was too difficult. So what did we do? We used contradiction and assumed that it is what? Rational. Because if it is something, that's something I can have. <laughs> oh, it's not that. That's, I don't know what to hold. I don't have anything to grasp onto. Well, how about this? Let's assume that it is. Now I have something to hold. And then show that it always leads to something that is false. That's a common technique in proofs. If, if it's not this, that's hard to hold on to. So let's assume it's is and rather show it's false. And so we're going to use contradiction. In other words, we are going to, our new goal is to show a bijection from z plus to r is always false, right? That's contradiction. Assume that it is countable, right? That it, we're going to assume countability, so show that a bijection from z to r is always false. All right, we're going to simplify our problem a little bit. Note. If this is r, right, which is the real number lines, if I can show all reals from 0 to 1 are uncountable, then r is uncountable. Does that make sense? I have this big thing. If I tell you a small piece of it is uncountable, is obviously the big thing uncountable? Because <laughs> it's bigger than it, right? It has more stuff. You're a, you're a subset of all students at WSU, right? So if I could prove you're crazy, because you take this class, have I proved that students at Wichita State are crazy? Yeah, you're the witness. Make sense? You're a subset of the bigger group. <laughs> if I show that my subset has a property, the bigger group has the property. I mean, if you're crazy, students at WSU are crazy. We, we handle that. So if the numbers from 0, 1 are uncountable, obviously the numbers themselves all together have to be uncountable. You know, even if everything outside was countable, if you include an uncountable, it's uncountable. OK, so that's what we're going to do. We will prove that the reals from 0 to 1 are uncountable by contradiction. Here's my proof. I'm going to assume that the reals from 0 to 1 are countable. And what do I want to eventually show? That statement is what? False. So its opposite must be true. All right, what does it mean for the reals from 0 to 1 to be countable? That means there is a bijection from z plus to the reals from 0 to 1. OK. What does that look like? Oh, I know how these things look. Number one goes here, number two goes here, number three goes here, number four goes here, number five goes here, dot, dot, dot. Here's a function. All right, I don't know what real it is, but I'm going to call it like this. Essentially, there's an ordering of the reals. 
There's a first reel, there's a second reel, there's a third reel, just like this, right? Do, 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 do. Like there. That's the first rational number is 0. The second rational number is 1. The third rational number is negative 1. The fourth rational number is a half. The fifth rational number is a negative half, right? There's an ordering of the rationals. I, show, I found the ordering of the rationals, therefore the rationals are countable. On the other hand, if we have this, if I assume that the conclusion, I take the opposite of the conclusion, which we're allowed to do, we're allowed to negate the conclusion, I assume that I have these reals. But what would a real number between 0 and 1 look like? Give me an example of a number between 0 and 1 that's not a fraction. Reals are normally represented by what? Sorts of the D. Decimals, right? Give me a decimal number between 0 and 1. But what went, what went before the word point? 0. 0. 0.5. Give me another one. 0 0.1. <laughs> Give me one that's irrational. 0 .1, 0 .1, 0 .1. Yep. Is that a number between 0 and 1? Yep. So it has to be in the set. It's purely irrational. It's going to be there. Now, I know the bijection exists. I don't quite know what, I don't know what the numbers are, but I do know this. They're 0 point something. 0. Point what? Well, you said 0. 0.5. How'd you know it was 5? Why'd you pick a 5? Because you picked a decimal, right? So what do I actually pick? I pick a decimal from the first number, first decimal, and then the first number, second decimal, and then for the first number, third decimal, and for the first number, fourth decimal, and decimal 1, 5. And then I could pick decimal 2, 1, decimal 2, 2, decimal 2, 3, decimal 2, 4, decimal 2, 5. Decimal 3, 1, decimal 3, 2, decimal 3, 3, decimal 3, 4, decimal 3, 5, decimal 4, 1, decimal 4, 2, decimal 4, 3, decimal 4, 4, decimal 4, 5, decimal 5, 1, decimal 5, 2, decimal 5, 3, decimal 5, 4, decimal 5, 5. All right, here's the deal. This is a bijection. What does that tell you about this group right there? All reals are here. All of them. What about that 0 0.10100100100100? Is that there? Yes, somewhere. Somewhere in that list. Where's 0 0.5? In that list. What about 0 0.25? In that list. Right? It's a bijection. All reals are here. Right? We know this. Note. All reals from 0 to 1 are here. Right? Right there. All of them. I've just put them in order. That's what makes it a bijection. <clears throat> I am going to do one thing. I don't like... two versions of the same number. For example, 0 0.123 is actually equal to 0 0.1229 repeating, right? Remember how I did that last class? So what I'm going to do is not only are all reals here, because of this, I am going to skip or basically not skip, just remove, remove all infinite nine versions of terminating decimals. In other words, for example, if I didn't do that, how many times is one fourth here? One fourth is written as what? 0 0.25, but it's also written as 0 0.24999999999 forever, right? That's one fourth occurs twice. I don't want that. I'm going to have one fourth occur once. If I do that, have I actually removed anything? No, I'm just not allowing repeats. So now I actually have this. 
not only are all reals from 0 to 1 here, they're all unique. And so that's 1 and 2 by getting rid of infinite 9 versions we also know each ri is unique. If it's unique, we actually can say one thing. For example, if I have uniqueness and I said I had the number 0. Point, don't know, don't know, but I have a 4 here, don't know, don't know. Zero point, don't know, don't know, but I have a three here, don't know, don't know. Would it really matter if every one of those numbers are the same? If it's a unique expansion, if at any time, same position has different numbers, what would I know about those two numbers? They're different. That's what the word unique means. If I look at the same spot, is this number the same? Do I have to actually compare everybody? No. I just got to find one difference. If I can find one difference, it's different. It's like, why didn't you check the others? I don't need to. It's a unique expansion. One difference, it's different. Are we OK with that? All right. What I'm going to attack is the word all. So I'm going to do this. Consider the number. 0 0.d1, d2, d3, etc. I'm going to call this um, let's call this r star. It's my star real. He's important. Just I don't even care what the decimals are, d1, d2, d3. If I look at it, where is it? Where do I immediately know it is? It's definitely between 0 and 1. So let's consider this thing here. We know it is between 0 and 1. All numbers between 0 and 1 are in here, right? All of them. Hmm. I'm going to do the following thing, 2. But I'm going to make r star di to be the following. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the first decimal to the first real. I'm going to compare the second decimal to the second real. I'm going to compare the third decimal to the third real. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go, you know what, see D11 up there, and this guy's D1. I'm going to look at D11, and whatever number it is, I'm going to make D1 not that. And I'm going to make it not 0, and I'm going to make it not 9. Why, do, why should I stay away from zeros and 9s? Because it's that terminating infinite number of 9 issue, right? This doesn't cut. There might be a possibility that I accidentally form because if I look at this, for example, if that number is a five and I make this thing a four, it could it possibly be R one? Nope. And I'm going to go to the second decimal and I'm going to compare it to the second decimal of the second number. And I'm going to say, okay, fine. I'm going to compare this to this. Then I'm going to compare this to this, and then I'm going to compare this to this. And I'm going to always make sure, I'm free to do this, I can make my own numbers. I'm going to pick D1 so it's not D11. And it's not 0 and it's not 9. Well, I have lots of choices. I just need three, I have 10 decimals. I only have three that I have to avoid. I have a lot of freedom. But if D1's not D11, it can't be R1. If D2 is not D22, it can't be R2. If D3 is not D33, it can't be R3. Catch the pattern? What if I do this forever? Is this number in that list? No. It's not. But this list had everybody. Yeah, it has all. 
and not this one. That's false. <laughs> right? That's an immediate contradiction. And so the question is, how do I do that? How could you pick that D1 and D11 are not the same? There's lots of ways to do this, right? And so we're going to make it so that we're going to make D1 not D11 and not 0 or 9, because those are problematic, because of that whole terminating infinite number of 9s. We're going to make T2 not D22 and not 0 or 9. We're going to make D3 not D33 and not 0 or 9. What does that mean? That means that R star cannot be R1. That means that R star cannot be R2. That means that R star cannot be R3. Well, if I continued this pattern, if I continue this, this tells me that R star is never Ri for all of them. So I have a number between 0 and 1 that's not in my list. Therefore, that's a contradiction. Hence, reals are uncountable. So what did we assume? We assumed that they're the same cardinality. Essentially, we assumed that they're the same size. And then showed that that assumption is always false. So what must be true? It's flip. So if them being countable is always false, them not being countable, they're uncountable, right? Must be true. So it has to be uncountable. Now the book, the question is how do you do this? Honestly, I'm okay with right here. That's that's how I would do it because you're you're just allow a lot of freedoms for the students. On the other hand, the textbook does the following. The textbook makes a function. And I think they use like four and five. What they do is say di is equal to either four or five. If dii is not a four, make it a four. If dii is a four, make it a five. And so they use this function right here. They use a piecewise. I think they use 4 and 5. Do, do, do. Yep, they do. But really, it could be anything. You could pick 3 and 2. Oh, well, what, what if it's 4? Uh, pick 6. <laughs> pick 1. Right? Pick 1s and 2s. What's kind of funny, though, is, is that if you look at this, this R star is 0 point a bunch of 4s and 5s. And it's not in my list. But my list has all. That has to be false. So the book doesn't say, I like it this way because it's more explanatory of what you're doing. This does the same thing. It's just a function that does it. You can do it however you want. I've had students do four and five. I've had students say that if it's a number three, make it the number before, right? <laughs> if it's a zero, make it a one. If it's a one, make it a two. If it's a two, make it a three. They do some, but then they stay away from the zeros and nines, right? If it's a 9, I don't want to make a 0. If it's an 8, I don't want to make it a 9. Let's go back to 2, right? You can be as creative as you want. Don't care, as long as it satisfies that. Because the important part is that happens.